My name is Sebastian and in this video I want to show you how to get started with using the terminal as a developer. Because I admit it, for a lot of developers using the command line can still be a little bit daunting or scary, this black window that only accepts commands that we have to type, it might not be that helpful. But I want to show you why it can be really, really effective and productive for you to do so and why you might want to look into using the command line a little bit more. When we're just starting here, we have this black scary window and I'm using a Unix um, command line here. So when I say command line, I mean a Unix style command line. If you use Windows, then I recommend to use the subsystem for Linux on the Windows or some emulation uh, shells such as Baboon or Sigwin. And here, well, that's an echo command um, and some arguments. So it uh, says hello, that's hello world on the command line. And then what you have to know, a command line is typically always in one working directory. So we have the working directory that we can also find out with this command and it shows us that we're now in the home directory. We can switch that by typing CD or depending on the setup, um, then some um, directory or depending on the setup, I can even do this without, I can go into my working project here, that's a Java project. And then I can execute commands that are actually then within that folder where I'm currently located. We also see I have a setup that shows some Git highlighting there, but that's not that important. And then what I can do, I can execute some commands. For example, I can just list the current files here with ls. That's another command that I can use. And you can use that, for example, with some extra arguments to have this in a more readable format where it just shows me all of my files and directories as um, a list here with some extra information about the permissions and such. And we see also it shows me all of the files, including the dot files and everything. So I like about the command line that it's more, you know, the truth that it shows me usually everything and I can just execute some commands here quite on a low level on the Unix or Linux system. So this is just really helpful. And then I can just execute all of the commands that I would like to use as a developer as well. So the first one typically is something like your build tool. As a Java developer, that might be something like Maven or Gradle or NPM or Make or whatever um, have you. I will use Maven with my Maven project that I have. So usually you would probably build this from within your IDE. And the IDEs do a really good job with that. So that's really helpful that I can build my project here and I can compile it and such. So there's a lot of cool stuff in the IDEs. But I also usually want to be able to build this on the command line. Why? Because for me, that's more like this golden source of truth. Because sometimes the IDEs do some implicit things or they have some slightly different setup that if you check out a project and if you just try to build it in the IDE, you might have it just a little bit differently. And then before you commit, you just want to make sure that everything also, you know, builds from scratch, which the command line does a really good job. So with this, I want to just fire up a command and you see what I did there. Let me show you a keyboard overlay for that. What I just did was another command that clears the current window. That is the clear command, or you can just press control L. That's also helpful. It just clears the window and I have more space. And I can now type something like MVN, which is my Maven command, and then some build such as Maven package. And I can execute this in the command line, which just now builds my uh, project. So that is quite straightforward. And then if depending on your uh, setup here, if I use this Maven tool, and if you read about all the different build phases and which uh, commands and arguments you have, you can trigger that accordingly, such as a uh, Maven package that builds uh, together my uh, project. And then I can type this LS again, or I have an alias. So with all of these extra recommendations and extra tips, I will link you to some more information of some other videos and a course that I'm offering link down below if you want to learn more about that. But just as a very basic, you know, we see what this tool now did here, it created this target directory, that's sort of this uh, Maven uh, standard here. And then the uh, compilation files are in there. Okay, so that's just one basic example how I can build my project here. If now I, for example, want to read some files on the command line, that is possible as well. There's this cat command 
um, that would concatenate files or just display their contents. And then I can, for example, have a look at this git ignore file. Another helpful tip, always try to type tab or hit tab to autocomplete. So depending on your shell installation, this will actually give you very helpful uh, tips as well. So for example, if I type this cat command again, and then a dash, which is typical, some uh, typically some options in Unix, then I hit tab and it will already show me what options I have, right? So for example, well, whatever that is uh, here, um, but it will also autocomplete files or depending on the current kind of context that you're in and the shells nowadays are pretty intelligent about this sort of as an IDE with the syntax highlighting and the code uh, completion that you can hit type and it will just autocomplete this. So with that, I have a helpful uh, tip available as well. The same um, thing is if you don't know what these commands do, there's also a helpful uh, tip if for most of them you just type dash dash help. So all of these dashes are typically these so-called options and then it will show you, well, some more help about what you can actually do with this particular cat command. Or there's also another thing in Unix, uh, man for manual and then a manual for this particular um, command that you type, such as man cat or man echo and so on and so forth. So this is just quite helpful to get started. I would always recommend to, you know, hit tab to autocomplete or to try to autocomplete what you can do. The shells are pretty good at that nowadays. You can also use the cursor arrows to get the last um, previous commands or to hit control R to do a backward search. So if I want to hit my maven command again and I forgot about the syntax, I can start typing that and it will just um, search and browse through this. So I can type this or hit uh, control R again and uh, then it will browse through the commands that I have um, executed before. And then I can do so again. So this is also just a helpful uh, way to get started. Now for the version control integration, that's also quite good to know, such as git. I really like to use this on the command line as well, or at least I want the possibility to execute it from there. You see that it already has some helpful extra information, for example, which branch I am uh, currently. So there is this master branch here, and it can, I can also issue a status or some other uh, commands. I typically just want to be able to use it from the command line as well. Why? Well, again, the IDE tools and integrations are really good here, but sometimes they do things implicitly, such as that they auto add your files into staging and then, you know, you're not quite sure what you're committing or it, you just need to double check. And for me, I actually learned how to use Git and all these tools on the command line, which just has the benefit that you actually know sort of the underlying lower level commands and what the thing is actually doing. So this is probably the most what I love about the command line, especially on a Unix and Linux system, that you can pre do pretty much all the low level things that your computer can do by using the command line. So that's just the thing uh, to get started here. If you would like to learn more about the git commands, there are some tutorials out there, but it just helps if you, for example, do a status or see in which branch you are or um, in which remote um, repository you are there and all of these things. So there's just some commands that help you uh, there quite quickly, where if you know a bunch of commands, you can find out this information just much quicker than exploring your IDE. So that's just one recommendation I have with regards to v, um, VCS system integration as well, that you just know how to use them on the command line. And of course, if we're talking about automation, that's another very cool thing about the command line. And I created um, another video, how to get started with bash scripting here. But just as the very basic, it helps if we can use these commands and just put them into a file and makes it, make it executable. For example, I can say, I take this clean package command and actually there is now a little bit advanced syntax. I can say, please echo this thing with the correct uh, quotes here and add it into a file. So this pipe uh, here, I uh, will just put it into another file. For example, I call this build.sh and then I can go into um, this file, add some, some other magic number uh, here, sort of. So again, I have more um, 
videos that explain what I'm doing here. But basically, I put my commands into a file, I make it um, executable. So then it just has this executable flag. And then I can sort of have this uh, way of typing it. Um, dot is to current directory. And I say current directory slash build dot sh. So similar to a command, I can just have the relative path or the absolute path of a file and just type it sort of as it were a command and then hit enter and then it will just execute whatever it is there. And now the cool thing is with one command, it's it can be helpful to just memorize the syntax, right? So if I look into the file, now it tells me how to build my project or maybe I want to do a few more commands and then it can be really helpful. So just please build this as a maven. Um, build and then also build it as a docker build, for example, uh, build this to some um, well, temp directory, a temp image. And then what it will do, then it will attempt to build this Maven project. And then afterwards, immediately attempt to build a Docker one, which uh, will, will fail because I don't have a Docker file here available. But the cool thing about that is that this is already a very basic form of automation. I can lean back and sip my coffee while my project is building with maybe individual steps. And this is just to get started on the command line. And there are many, many more helpful tips, especially how to get faster and especially how to use it in a more effective way. And I just want to tell you, once you get used to using the terminal, you don't want to miss it anymore. But again, to get started, they're just very basic commands that you can know. And then if you want to learn more, I have some uh, videos and resources out there. You can also check out a course on this link down below. And if this video helped you, I would really appreciate a like and thanks a lot for watching.